Okay, so here's our photo reference, and again, this is taken with very little perspective distortion. This is almost orthographic. The camera was quite a far way away from the image, and I think the focal length was set to about 120. What we want to try to find now is this line right here. Do you remember what this line is called up here along the top? supra-orbital margin. Okay, what does supra stand for? Well, super, some version of above, some hierarchical statement which says it is so much better or higher level than the one that's below. You'll only see or here a supraorbital if there is an inferior orbital. If there is nothing below it or above it, then there's no distinction and it's just simply called an orbital margin. We have a supraorbital margin, so that means that there's an inferior orbital margin. And that's what we have down here. Orbital makes sense. Orbital as in the orbit of the eye. Margin, as in the rim. The language has changed over the years, but we've just kept the anatomical terms as they are. It's just helped in scientific inquiry. So we need to find the inferior orbital margin. Well, it's right there. We've kind of naturally placed it, but You'll notice a lot of confusion here and the polygons are getting all wonky. That's what we need to clean up right now. But before we clean it up, I want to make sure that we do a planar analysis and we understand not just how to smooth it, because you, know, you can smooth anything and destroy it. I want to know how to form it. What are the plane changes that are happening here? So we can see that there is the infraorbital margin right here very clear we can see a plane break and the cheek right here so the zygomatic bone is going back in space the inferior orbital margin is coming up there's a nice little triangle right here. And then the side of the nose. Now you're going to have to chop away form. That's just part of what we have to do. But I'd say that's a pretty clear breakdown. Make sure that we have side, uh, front of the nose, side of the nose, and then we have this triangle in here that's basically dividing the front of the cheek, front of the zygomatic, or in this case, actually, that's the maxilla. That's the front of the face, and then going back in space. The glabella. We have almost no perspective distortion. The inside of that glabella, the front of the glabella, front facing, front of the brow, and then the inside of the eye. So what I really want you to pay attention to here are two, well, there's really four quadrants that I want to be mindful of. Side of the nose. 
the triangle, which I'll call the frontal process of the maxilla, the triangle that sits above the front plane of the maxilla, the next quadrant over, it's really important to call this by its name, the lock rimal bone. You are rarely going to see this, and on a female, um, not very often at all. It's going to be all covered up. But sunken eyes will almost always show the lacrimal bone to some extent. Why you need to be aware of it is because of the plane change that it's going to facilitate and how it's going to relate to the inner corner of the eye, what they call the caruncula. Okay, so that's one, two, three. And then the inside corner of the glabella. Those are the planes that I... I really want you to be mindful of. And then just notice how these are flowing. Notice that the, the inferior orbital margin flows in, heads right to the glabella. You can break that off for the lacrimal bone, go one direction, break it off again for the frontal process of the maxilla, the border there, and we get this nice little fan. So we're going to want to be thinking about that specific area. So hopefully this planar breakdown will help you. But let's go in now and create it, actually go through the process step by step. The first step for me is to get that uh, inferior superior or the inferior orbital margin. So by that I mean we're going to come in and get that line that basically comes right up to the glabella and then can be veered off to be one of two things. Easy to just use the move brush but do it from a side view because this really actually shows you how this uh, inferior orbital margin really behaves and spend some time look at your partner your friend um, parents try to see how this line behaves it is not a very easy line to understand but it's going to move inwards in our case I'm going to move it in or a little bit straight up and down again it then can veer off into the lacrimal bone and the frontal process So I'm going to start by straightening it. Let's turn perspective off. And then pulling back. Try not to smooth too much because you'll lose the edge. It'll be hard to find. And we want the edge. Good. Looking in from another side. I'd say that alone has already done a lot. You're not a, you may not be aware of how much it's already done to help us, but it's done a lot. The primary thing it's done is it's separated the uh, zygomatic the maxilla, and given us some space to create the side plane for that nasal bone. So let's make sure that the nasal bone is indicated, trim dynamic, and just give it a side plane. It has a side plane, it has a top plane, and then I'm going to round it. Okay. So we're on target. I'm proceeding slowly. We have the, the uh, inferior orbital margin moving up into the glabella. We have that nasal bone and what could essentially be the front and the side. We have three more quadrants to cover. Frontal process, lacrimal, and the interior quadrant for the uh, glabella. Okay, so the frontal process, I'm just going to add a little bit with clay brush. 
not too much we just want to add a little bit to create the boundaries of that triangle notice that the boundaries of that triangle are heading right to that nasal bone we're going to leave just the tiniest little lip for it and then shoot it backwards just like that trim dynamic is is doing all the work I'm gonna round that margin too by the way smoothing it out okay so side plane of the nose, let me just make sure it's intact. Frontal process, that's intact. And then let's make sure that it looks okay from the front and come in and approach the, uh, the lacrimal. I'm gonna give that triangle a bit of an inward lilt. There we go. Just a little curve. All right, lacrimal bone. Love this bone. Come right in. Let's check our subdivisions we may need to relax this before we start to create this muscle okay so that worked did create some problems that we've got to be aware of think about fixing uh, but easily fixed with a little bit of the clay brush. Okay, now we're going to come in with the clay brush. Uh, I think I want to divide this one more time. And we're going to add the lacrimal bone. Just a small indicator for it. But really, the lacrimal bone is going to actually dip in, or, or the lacrimal groove. And it's going to emphasize that inferior orbital margin. And we're going to look in one place right here. This is where your tears come from literally tear duct goes down into this area and this is where it squeezes out the tears so let's just make sure the lacrimal bone has its position and the lacrimal groove is in there separating the two so we've got a nice change in plane boom comes down lacrimal bone and then the, the eye It's as simple as that. It is originating from the same place that the frontal process started, and we are continuing it right across that. So again, it's pretty much that form that we created earlier. It's this wedge shape, and it is meeting up with the nasal bone. Now, the next quadrant is the glabella. So we want to get the inside corner of the glabella and that's not that easy um, there's a couple of really important plane changes that this thing makes and we have to be aware of it because right now I have the plane change happening in a very obvious direction nothing too uh, special about that 
but everything along the line that I've just drawn is all going to get actually planed and transitioned inwards because this part of the glabella is actually facing downwards. It's a downward facing plane. Just like a capital in an architectural column, we're going to have several directions to it. And so moving inwards and inwards. So where does the, uh, the plane change? Where does it become the inside of the eye? That's where we need to keep in mind our lacrimal bone because it's going to kind of line up with the lacrimal. So I'm going to use the clay brush and follow that line. Oops, wrong brush. And I'm going to curve slightly in. It heads towards that lacrimal, but it comes inward slightly. Kind of like the nostrils, how they, the both sides, they don't meet, they just kind of touch. They just kind of connect in this area. Uh, okay, so we're pulling around, and that means that we've got to adjust some of the glabella. Okay, and there we go. So let's just break down what I've done a little bit and make sure that we have a clear sense of these plane changes. So again, we're looking for the inferior orbital margin, right? And then we've got the su uh, su uh, supra orbital margin along the top. Okay, we've got the glabella. Notice that the glabella, the form creates this kind of pinched inwards quality. The lacrimal bone, the frontal process. is creating this kind of wedge top front. And they're lining up and really just connecting in there with this front part of the nose, the nasal bone, okay, and connecting. Just keep in mind that the glabella is an extra little form pulling inside. So make a note of this. This is going to take a little while to, to get clear, and it becomes a lot more um, useful once you have sculpted the eye. And uh, when you do that, what I want you to keep in mind is just look for the lacrimal bone. Research it. Try to find it in your facial, uh, your facial uh, sculpt. Try to find the frontal process. There is not a lot of information about the frontal process of the maxilla. But for me, it is a pivotable, pivotal shape for you to get the eye right and to be able to sculpt realistically in there. Everybody who sculpts realistically has that in their brain to some capacity. Next thing that we need to look at is the maxilla itself. So remember the maxilla is this quadrant coming in part of the teeth and forming that part of the nose all the way up actually and inside the eye. We need to now make sure that we're getting the transition 
correct. Make sure that we know how the cheek, the zygomatic, or the, the zygomatic portion of the maxilla is going to then descend down to help us form the cheek itself. Uh, sorry, how it's going to descend down and form the uh, barrel of the teeth, really.